I'm talking today about uh, clinical exam, either for uh, FRCS or postgraduate or subedic exam. Uh, for clinical exam, it is good opportunity to get high score because he will not ask you about knowledge. He will ask you about your skills and your approach in diagnosis. And this is something you are doing every day. Uh, what is important to mention now, he will examine you. You are doing in the exam, actually, what you are doing in your clinic or in your hospital or not. So it is very important to practice history taking and clinical examination for every case. Uh, after taking history and uh, doing clinical examination, um, he will complete the case by providing you with investigation like X-ray scan or MRI uh, or others. And he will discuss uh, treatment, not in details, but your approach and management and uh, principles of uh, uh, treatment either surgical treatment or conservative treatment. Uh, today, I will talk about upper limb. Most of upper limb are uh, short cases. Uh, long cases, usually uh, hip or spine or knee or shoulder. But most of upper limb are short cases. Um, upper limb, uh, Yes, these are the common cases which you can face in postgraduate or Swedish exam, for example, for the shoulder. Uh, there is few varieties for instability, like anterior instability, the current shoulder dislocation. Uh, this usually you, uh, you face these cases in young age. For middle age, you can face Cases like uh, frozen shoulder or impingement, calcific tendinitis. Usually, this is a short case. In older people, you can see rotator cuff tear, rotator cuff arthropathy. Rotator cuff arthropathy is much more common than rotator cuff tear, and uh, glenohumeral osteoarthritis. And also, AC dislocation, acromioclavicular dislocation, you can face in the exam either acute case or delayed presentation. For each one, uh, you will talk uh, for management mainly. Also, you can face uh, cases like brachial plexus lesion. Uh, few cases about carpal tunnel syndrome and it's differential diagnosis. Arthrogrip uh, bosses uh, less common. For the elbow, you can face radial head fracture, radio ulnar sinostosis, congenital radial head dislocation. All of these are short cases. Most of hand are short cases, actually, except uh, nerve injury. Nerve injury may be short case or long case or part of long case. For the hand, you can see rheumatoid arthritis of the hand, uh, psoriatic arthritis, uh, CMC, osteoarthritis. Nerve lesion, most common is radial nerve, uh, then ulnar nerve, then median nerve. Dubitrine disease of the hand. You can see also ganglion, giant cell tumor, lipoma, or simple swelling for differential diagnosis of the hand. You can see also tendon rupture either from rheumatoid arthritis or others. You can see also differential diagnosis of stiff, shoe, stiff finger like trigger finger or volar, volar blade contracture. Uh, also Kimbock disease. You can see either in viva or clinical. Uh, a snack uh, or nanonitis scaphoid. It can be viva, it can be short case also. Uh, rheumatoid rest also you can face in the exam. 
uh, less common is mid-lung deformity. You can see in FRCS more frequent than other exams. Other congenital anomalies are not very common. For shoulder clinical cases, um, we are repeating ourselves for young age instability, AC dislocation, slab lesion, bicep tendinitis, calcific tendinitis, that is if I solite the same bend, rotator cuff tear, and rotator cuff arthropathy. For shoulder examination, uh, you will, if, if it is intermediate case or long case, you will start by general examination very quick. And then examination of the shoulder, look, feel, move. For the palpation, we should palpate each joint, subacromial space, bicipital, groove, trapezius, and cervical spine. Then uh, proceed to rotator cuff strength tense testing, impingement test, stability test, biceps tendon, AC joint examination. Uh, again, this is picture. You, uh, can help you for uh, for inspection, look and feel. Here, a sternoclavicular joint, it's a joint, glenohumeral joint. Uh, here you can palpate for slap tear, bunker lesion, and bicep tendon. Here, the pain of subacromial pain and rotator cuff and bursitis. Uh, here, this is humeral lesion. So the shoulder, uh, shoulder being stopped at the insertion of delta. Uh, for look, you will do very quick, also palpation very quick. Then range of motion also, uh, forward deflection, abduction. Start by um, active, you will complete the range by passive. And to uh, to tell the examiner at, the, at last what is the range of motion of uh, forward flexion, abduction, external rotation, internal rotation. No need to to use the geniometer for uh, for every measurement because you are experiencing it. You can see, you can measure it by your eyes. This is 100. 20 degrees, this is 90 degrees, like this. Uh, this is a test job test for supraspinatus. You should do very well. The technique is important. Subscapularis muscle, you should do the three tests for subscapularis muscle. If the patient can't do internal rotation, simply you will say, I can't uh, do lift off test because the patient can't reach his back. Billy breast test also. If there is any limitation or for the test, or if the test can cause pain for the patient, you simply say, I can't do this test because it is painful for the patient. Uh, this is how to measure the internal rotation. This is a frequent question, how to measure the internal rotation, because very difficult to measure the angle, but uh, here it says simple measurement. Uh, you can see the patient, you can tell the patient can reach his hand to, for example, iliac crest or uh, lumbar spine, or this is simply to measure the distance between C7 and uh, the thumb of the patient. Uh, this uh, test for infraspinatus and teres minor. Uh, Hornblower test for uh, teres minor, this uh, E. And uh, uh, center rotation against resistance and abduction for infraspinous. These are the test of long head of biceps. This is a speed test. And this is. Uh, Kyrgyzstan test. These are the tests for instability. 
this apprehension test, also relocation test of weather. Uh, this is sulcus sign for uh, multiple instability or generalized lag station. This that's for load and shift test. Before uh, going to differential diagnosis, I want to tell it is not essential to do all the tests for uh, the case. Uh, at this point, we will stress over the importance of history taking. History taking will guide you to what tests you should do. If the history is young age and the um, and the history for instability, so you should do focus on range of motion and instability test and rotator cuff. Um, testing. But if the case is rotator cuff arthropathy or rotator cuff tear, it is not very essential to stress on instability. So this is important because very frequent for the patient with instability to have rotator cuff tear, but the opposite is not. Uh, after finishing the history and the examination, you will you have differential diagnosis. You should mention the differential diagnosis relative to the case. Differential diagnosis after history taking is different from differential diagnosis after uh, clinical examination. It will be more narrow. Differential, differential diagnosis of tear, maybe at his capsulitis, calcific tendonitis, labral tear, bicepital tendinopathy, glenohumeral AC joint, arthritis or AC arthritis. Or patient frequently also uh, may have combined of these diseases. Rotator cuff arthropathy and adhesive capsulitis, rotator cuff tear with calcific tendonitis, rotator cuff tear with labral tear or tendonitis. Um, after taking history and examination, you should have differential diagnosis, so you should investigate. Uh, every investigation, you should mention why and what you are expecting to find. For X-ray, you're expecting to find AC arthritis, uh, reduce the subacromial space, for example. For rotator cuff arthropathy, uh, stabilization, uh, shoulder joint proximal migration of head of, of humerus, uh, glenohumeral osteoarthritis, for example. Uh, for rotator cuff testing, radiologically, maybe ultrasound, but cheap and non-invasive, but it is operator dependent. Uh, the gold standard is MRI. Uh, also, for MRI, you, you should, be, should have experience to read the MRI. MRI should be able to diagnose rotator cuff tear, slap tear, bunkert lesion, and fatty infiltration of sobraspinatus, and no gutelier uh, grading for fatty infiltration of the muscle, and to know also Hamada classification for rotator cuff arthropathy. These are essential for shoulder cuts. If, uh, if the case is rotator cuff tear, uh, you should mention first conservative treatment. You shouldn't jump to um, surgical treatment, osteoscopy or open or like this. You should mention first conservative treatment for small tear, irreparable tears in elderly in the form of physical therapy and steroid injection. Uh, if the patient uh, uh, failed his conservative treatment, you can proceed to uh, mini open or arthroscopic repair with biceps tenotomy or tenodesis. Uh, the uh, surgery is indicated if failed conservative treatment or it is traumatic rotator cuff tear. Usual traumatic rotator cuff tear, better to uh, treat surgically. How uh, 
to take consent for, from the patient. It's consent, you should mention the procedures and its alternative and the benefit of the procedure and its possible risk and complication. This is the consent. Should mention all this. Explanation, what the patient have, uh, explanation, what you will do the in the procedure, and the other alternative, and the complication and risk. Complication in rotator cuff repair, post-operative post adhesive capsulitis, re recurrence of tear, um, and the increase in tear size, and And the benefit for this is outcome is better than conservative treatment. If the patient has rotator cuff arthropathy or glenohumeral uh, osteoarthritis, so the treatment will be between total shoulder arthroplasty or reverse shoulder. Total shoulder arthroplasty is not option here in rotator cuff arthropathy. In rotator cuff arthropathy, we will proceed to reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Reverse shoulder arthroplasty is ideal answer for arthroplasty because it has no contraindication except deltoid dysfunction. But uh, total shoulder and hemi, they have drawbacks and many contraindications. The principles for Reverse shoulder arthroplasty is medialization and distalization of center of rotation, along with degree of constraint, allowing deltoid to act as prime mover in abduction. This is example for short case elderly man with rotator cuff arthropathy. Uh, this is a GB letter. This is 70, 74 years old man has been referred to orthopedic clinic with 10 years history of shoulder pain and weakness. What you expect? 74 years, 10 years history of shoulder pain and weakness. For me, it is rotator cuff tear, massive tear, or even rotator cuff arthropathy. So how you are taking the history? History here is very important. You will ask about the pain, site of pain, uh, severity of pain, degree, on the score. It is about stiffness, limitation of overhead activities, loss of motion, the likes to paralysis, uh, objective assessment of the patient functional impairment. What is limited for the patient? Uh, uh, he can dress himself, he can brush his teeth, reaching the top or the back of the head, reaching over the axilla, washing the brineum, washing face, comb, combing the hair, writing or turning the key. This is are the most important questions to be asked. This is history of present illness. You can add to this the past history, Surgical history, medical history. What medical history should ask for the shoulder? Most important is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes can cause wrist pain, pain without without any movement. This is ortho, uh, neuropathy from diabetes. Also, hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a major cause for frozen shoulder. Diabetes is a major cause for frozen shoulder. Should ask about neurological uh, symptoms. Ask about neck pain cervical uh, spine disease. The patient ask for radiculo, uh, radiculopathic symptoms. Uh, is the pain is limited to the shoulder or uh, going downwards up to the fingers? Maybe, maybe the patient has double head. The patient with rotator cuff tear, maybe he has combined source of pain, uh, the shoulder source of pain and cervical spine pain. At this time, you can proceed to examination. Uh, for uh, inspection, you can see muscle wasting, 
you but you should compare to the other side muscle wasting for deltoid from lack of motion uh, supraspinatus especially distal part uh, supraspinatus atrophy very difficult you can palpate if the patient is obese or the patient is muscular or there is no uh, atrophy of the deltoid so difficult to uh, uh, this is for the inspection. You can see scars, sinuses. This is important. You can see the patient from front, side, and behind. Also, you should see the movement of cervical spine is normal or not. Uh, the inspection, you can uh, palpation. You can ask the patient uh, which side uh, is hurting you. He will point to the point of uh, maximum tenderness. Keep away from it and start palpation. Palpation in order, uh, either from lateral to medial or from medial to lateral, from down up or up down, but you should have order. Uh, this is examination. This is uh, palpation. Then range of motion. Ask the patient to start by screening move. Ask the patient to move up forward deflection. Yes, it is limited. Abduction, forward deflection, abduction. Ask the patient external rotation, internal rotation. If the patient has no limitation, so uh, this is enough. If the patient has limitation, so we should measure. Ask the patient first. Forward deflection. Okay. Both are. Okay. Abduction. The patient should touch the ear. Then the patient tell him external rotation. External rotation up in uh, abduction. In abduction. And patient should reach his back and see how he can reach his back or not. Uh, then you can proceed to the test of uh, job test, Hornblower test, belly breast test, left off test, and test for slab lesion. And you should know at least one test for each muscle. Uh, this is a case of, of uh, septic shoulder. This is very frequent very frequent in uh, FRCS, he will give you a scenario. It will end by rotator cuff arthropathy secondary to uh, septic joint. Uh, after a few minutes, I will present full case, uh, intermediate case for uh, septic joint, but you should uh, keep in your mind suspicion for that, especially if the patient had uh, surgical intervention, and he didn't get benefit and pain increased, so we should suspect subclinical infection. If you suspect uh, infection, you should ask for a CT scan to see uh, sequestrum and necrotic bone. You should be have experience in MRI. Uh, this is another case for uh, the patient. Uh, this data uh, source from postgraduate uh, orthopedic uh, book, uh, the clinical part. This 74 years old man referred to orthopedic clinic with 10 years history of shoulder band weakness. Yes, this is the same case we uh, presented before, but here it is complete. The patient has the swelling in subdeltoid synovial fluid and uh, humeral head itself is tender. For examination, the patient has active forward deflection limited to 50 degrees. Passive forward deflection is 125. What is meant by that? So the limitation is due to pain. The patient has external and internal rotation actively and the limited to 10 degrees. 
this is important. Uh, also, grading of uh, the strengths of supraspinatus and uh, external rotation strengths from infraspinatus or teres minor, four over five. You should know MRC grading scale. Uh, this is summary for the history and examination. You should, this is how to answer. This is a summary. Uh, to describe radiograph for rotator cuff arthropathy, you will say plane, plane radiograph of right or left shoulder for skeletal maturation showing superior head migration combined with severe degenerative changes of glenohumeral joint. Chronic subluxation of humeral head often causes acetabilization uh, as secondary erosion of the glenoid acromial under, under surface, clavicle and clavicle uh, to accommodate the humor. Um, he will ask you what you will ask for next, MRI. MRI, he will comment on the rotator cuff tear and other finding, but for rotator cuff, especially supraspinatus, you should comment on uh, the tear is complete or not, full sickness or not, and there is fatty infiltration or not, there is atrophy of supraspinatus or not. Then management option. If it's only rotator cuff tear, you will say, tell about arthroscopic repair. Uh, he will, can discuss with you for um, a single row or double row. Uh, and for rotator cuff arthropathy, he will discuss uh, the principles for reverses shoulder as robust. Uh, this is another case for massive rotor cuff tear. Uh, if it is retracted about more than 2.5 centimeter or 4 centimeter, we will talk about um, uh, lattice mass dorsi transfer or uh, other alternatives like uh, subcutaneous reconstruction, for example, but better to to use the standard lattice mass dorsi transfer. Very important in history to ask about the hand dominance. Very important. Also, uh, for history, you should ask the patient about his expectation very important, what's his job, or uh, uh, how is his shoulder important for for him, for especially for earning his life. These are examples for the questions uh, in the exam. And this is example for the answers also. Here, uh, she's sore over supraspinatus, also greater tuberosity, the anterior and posterior joint line not tender. I'd like to test range of motion, the shoulder. Can you swing your arm by your side? Then upward into the air, abduction. This is example how you uh, will talk to the patient. Uh, the patient only has 80 degrees active abduction and is painful was loss of normal scapulothoracic rhythm. This is important. Passively, there is very little extra movement. So you will start by um, active, then you will complete by passive. The examiner asked, uh, ask you, you need to stabilize the scapula when there is discrepancy between active and passive range of motion. This is important. Uh, so also you should have uh, approach to how to answer the examiner about that. Tell him, yes, uh, I'm making this uh, test, then I will go to stabilize the scapula.
uh, the next question may be how you are going to operate uh, the patient. For example, for reverse shoulder osteoplasty, you will start by um, uh, taking consent for the patient, positioning of the patient, then marking approach. Then he will ask you in details about deltopectoral approach. So deltopectoral approach is very important. Uh, for sure, you will be asked about the details of deltopectoral approach in the exam, either in clinical or in vivo. Uh, here he can tell you it is uh, the tear of subraspine is four centimeter and full thickness. Um, at this time, better to use um, uh, a safe answer. I would refer here to experienced shoulder surgeon for repair these scuff tears on a regular basis. He can see you. You are the experienced surgeon. What can you offer? Uh, the patient, what treatment you will offer. I will offer arthroscopic surgery with possible latissimus dorsi transfer. But I have no experience for this case, so I will refer her to experience it, uh, sh uh, shoulder surgery. Uh, sometimes in short cases, he can tell you, you have two or three questions in history, you can ask the patient. So you should ask three questions, the important question with can, which can uh, lead you to the diagnosis and examination because it's a short case, five minutes only. So you should ask first about uh, what is the pain? And uh, uh, you have neurological symptoms or not, and there is stiffness or not. Uh, this is a short case. The patient has shoulder pain, but the patient has weak, painful shoulder with numbness, and the patient has neck scar from lumbar excision. So actually, it is not a shoulder problem, but the patient is presented with shoulder pain because the patient has C6 root problem from previous excision of neural neurolimoma. So here the answer is from the history. If the patient didn't tell you he she had a surgical excision of neurolimoma, then she complained from a, a neurological pain and someone did MRI for her because she is Six years, he find rotator cuff tear, and he referred the pain to rotator cuff, and this is completely wrong because uh, the patient actually has neurological symptoms and has no limitation of motion at all, only pain. So history is very important, even in short case. Uh, this is one example of intermediate case, complete case. I will talk in details about it. Uh, this is 54 years old female, physically active, used to play tennis. She's a secretary, presented with progressive pain and stiffness of her right shoulder for last two years. She noticed deterioration following arthroscopic subacromial bursal resection, subacromial decompression with PERSA excision and the patient hair pain is treated. So the patient two years ago, she had only shoulder pain. She did MRI. She has subacromial bursitis and she received, for example, local injection, steroid. Then she had arthroscopic resection of uh, BERSA. Then hair pain deteriorated. Uh, how you are going to take history for this patient? This patient, you will ask about her. She is hand dominant or not. From her age, she is physically active. She, you will ask about limitation of activity, um, dressing herself, brushing teeth, um, uh, cleaning brineum, putting in shoes, eating. Okay, carrying her bag. You will ask about all this. 
and you will ask about details about the surgery. Surgery done two years ago. Um, is there any discharge from the wound? Is there is, you will ask about symptoms of infection. Maybe the patient had sepsis. Is the patient, you will ask about the patient. You, you took antibiotic for long duration. And this is actually the patient answered, yes. I took antibiotic for 14 days and the sutures removed at three weeks. Usually sutures of shoulder arthroscopy to be removed at 10 days only. And the patient reported uh, persistent discharge for more than two weeks. And she received antibiotic for two weeks. The patient for past history, the patient is diabetic and she has hypothyroidism. She is overweight. All of this important. And all of this predisposing factor for infection and for deterioration of the drug. So how we are going to examine the patient? We will examine the patient in general. Um, we will examine the patient in general, patient is cachectic or not. Patient is healthy, she has any disability, patient has uh, cervical spine disease. All of this should be quick. Then proceed to local examination. We will exa start by inspection. We will see the scars healed well or not. Is there persistent sinus or not? Is there muscle atrophy for deltoids, supraspinatus, infraspinatus? And uh, examine also cervical spine. Uh, this is for inspection and palpation for sight of pain as we ex uh, explained before. Then proceed to rotator cuff. Rotator cuff is important in this case. We will start by range of motion because range of motion is a part of rotator cuff examination. Range of motion, first forward deflection, abduction, external rotation, abduction, external rotation, abduction, and internal rotation. Then rotator cuff examination, job test for subraspinatus. Uh, this three test for subscapularis and uh, external rotation against resistance. And this is Hornblower test for teres minor and other tests for infraspinatus. Uh, and you will say, okay, neurovascular examination is important for every case. So what else you didn't examine? Deltoid. Deltoid is important to examine and usually missed. Deltoid is important. But why you are examining the deltoid? Because if the patient needs reverse shoulder arthroplasty, for example, deltoid should be functioning. If the patient has nerve injury, for example, axillary nerve injury, uh, the patient uh, will have deltoid dysfunction. Sir, how you are investigating the patient? At this time, he will ask you, what is your uh, differential diagnosis? My differential diagnosis is maybe frozen shoulder, if there is limitation of range of motion, maybe uh, calcific tendinitis, maybe rotator cuff tear, maybe septic joint arthritis with glenohumeral osteoarthritis, maybe uh, rotator cuff arthropathy. So how you are going to investigate the patient? First of all, we should ask for X-ray. This is X-ray. This is, he will tell you, this is the X-ray two years ago. On the left side, on the right side, this is the X-ray now. There is complete destruction of the humeral head with loss of joint space. So there is, there is advanced degenerative changes of the joint. What is the next? What is your differential diagnosis here? Here, the differential diagnosis is very narrow. Here, uh, differential diagnosis is Rotator cuff arthropathy, second, degenerative arthritis as secondary to septic arthritis, third, neoplastic 
Phenoblastic case may be primary or secondary. Okay, so we can ask either for CT scan or MRI or both. This is CT scan, you can see the bone level of bone destruction. Yes, a lot of bone destruction. And this is the MRI. This is the MRI with arrows. He can ask you about uh, what these arrows uh, point to what. This is, you can see here, collection of fluid. This is secondary to sepsis, mostly. And this is necrotic bone. And you can see here, subacromial collection. So this case mostly is septic joint arthritis, uh, complicated by rotator cuff arthropathy, but it is a septic case. Okay, so what are the options? Of it is not rotator cuff arthropathy to say uh, direct. Uh, reverse shoulder osteoblast. No, it is patient has still collection. So you can't do direct osteoblast for the case. I, you should, I will tell him, I will talk with the patient and ask her about her expectation and the risk of complication of osteoblast and the other alternatives. I will offer her, you will offer her what? I will tell him this is a complicated case, difficult case. It needs multidisciplinary approach. MDT, this is the key for the answer. The case needs shoulder surgeon experience, infection, uh, infectious disease specialist, uh, physical therapist, And here, GB as well, also. So, discussion about this case, we should know this is active infection or not. Uh, there is organism to be treated or not. And for sure, this case, I will proceed for two-stage surgery. First of all, I will do the bridem, aggressive the bridem, and taking bone biopsy, multiple bone biopsy, send for culture and the pathology, and putting a spacer with antibiotic for three to six weeks, and uh, to measure the inflammatory markers, SR and CRB, until they are normalized. And I will proceed to second stage, uh, shoulder arthroplasty by experience shoulder surgeon. He can ask you if the case is very long and you are very quick in answering. Uh, you can reach this question. What approach you will do, you will use, deltobectral approach. He can ask you in details about this approach. Uh, the landmark, internervous plane is very important between deltoid with axillary nerve, and pectoralis uh, major with pectoral uh, nerves. I will ask you about cephalic vein, what you will do in case uh, you injured it. Yes, you will like get it um, uh, not to coagulate. What you will do uh, with subscapularis, for example, this is our important uh, questions. Uh, these are the principles for reverse shoulder osteoblasty, uh, inferiorization and uh, medializ medialization of center of rotation of humeral head. I, I, I don't think he will ask you about all these details, but principles should be known. 
uh, what is the benefit from uh, distalization and medialization of center of rotation still increases the deltoid liver are lens uh, relative to native shoulders. So uh, putting the deltoid to be the main worker for the shoulder. Uh, this is um, pictures explaining to you how distalization can increase the liver arc for the deltoid, improving its function. Uh, These slides you can review, but uh, if you want to take very high score. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will stop now uh, for at this stay at this point. And next lecture, I will talk about um, risk examination, risk cases, then uh, peripheral nerve injury and the rheumatoid rest and the elbow cases also. Thank you very much. And See you later.